Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Dreams Unlimited Travel Podcast. My name is John Magi. And I'm Kevin Close. And in this episode, we're going to answer more of your questions. Some of them will be travel related questions, some of them will be other questions. I don't know. Kevin curated a bunch from Twitter. This now is popular. That he has, now that he has more followers than I do. Thank you. He thinks he's the king of Twitter. <laughs> Unbelievable. Look, look how many followers I have. Look, look, look how many followers I have. <laughs> However, John sits and points out my typo, so. I do. You point, even... out, you point out mine as well. All right, so uh, again, Kevin put out a call on Twitter and, just, and asked for questions, so he's going to read the questions and we'll answer them together. All right, the first one is from Laura. And Laura says, I know you used to teach. Can you talk more about that job and how you moved into your current position with Dreams? I loved being a teacher. I dealt with five-year-olds. I was younger and had more stamina and more energy. It is one of the most taxing things I've ever done. I used to eat my lunch with my kids and then when it was actually my lunchtime, I would go out and sleep in the car. It was the only way I could get through a day. I moved to Florida. I couldn't take winter anymore. Well, I moved to Florida in the middle of a school year, so it was very hard to get a job in a school district in December. So I took a job with a timeshare company and it turned out I was really good and I rose in the ranks there until there was writing on the wall and they started to downsize the company. And I was one of the people downsized. In the meantime, while I was working there, I had met a man who owned a travel agency. Who's that? You. Oh. And we were living together at the time. And I kind of got let go and I called John from the parking lot and I said listen I was let go and he said let me call you right back and he said okay come on home I have a job for you so that's how I've gone from teacher to timeshare worker to dreams unlimited travel it was I love teaching I'm at the point in my life now where I don't think I have that much energy I miss dealing with five-year-olds five-year-olds are awesome they are still a little bit dependent on you, but and they think you are the answer to everything. Also, don't want you think it was strictly nepotism here. <laughs> it was strictly, oh yeah, come and work for us. Um, Kevin and I first, I don't know. This is a question that's asked all the time. Let's just deal with no, it. No, I don't want to deal with that question. I told you I don't want to deal with that one. But what I want to say is early on in our relationship, it was one of the things we had most in common was our love of Disney. Right and our knowledge of Disney and our shared experiences of Disney and growing up and all of that stuff. So I knew that Kevin came to us with a great deal of knowledge. He knew what was going on. He knew uh, about the parks uh, very, very well. He knew about all the stuff about planning trips and things. So it wasn't just about, oh, here's my husband, let him become part of our show. It was really about adding an asset to our show. So if you to want our, to know the uh, answer, company. If you want to know the answer to the question John doesn't want you to, to talk about, I told us somebody on Twitter this morning. Go find it there. Um, all right, what's our next question? Our next question comes from Daniel. In terms of rebooking trips, what have most of your Dreams Unlimited clients been doing? Are clients planning to go later in this year or canceling their trips altogether? Mm -hmm. I know what ABD is. I don't know the rest. All right, Mo for the most part, we are finding that our clients are rebooking. Anyone who is affected by closures, the park closures, adventures by Disney, canceling trips, uh, cruises canceling. Most people are definitely rebooking and taking advantage of the rebooking options that mm -hmm. Disney has offered them. In addition to that, 2021 is shaping up to be a very busy cruise month. We're getting a, a lot, a year, I'm sorry. 2021 is shaping up to be a very busy cruise year. This is something that um, kind of surprises me because I thought, well, maybe people would take it easy and see how things went. But it seems like across all cruise lines, 2021 is booking and doing well. I have not canceled many trips. Most of the people who have been displaced have rebooked for later. Uh, most are moving into 2021. And I already have folks who are lined up for the May 12th and the May 18th. Is it May 18th or May 19th? The 19th. One of those. I have folks who are haven't booked before who are ready to book. Those are the dates that you can book your right. adventures. By if you're an travel. insider, you can book on the 12th. If it's on the, if you're not an insider, you're a new guest. It's on the 19th. 
so, so yeah, I think most are rebooking. Yeah, I'm, we're oh, we're yeah. seeing a few fo a few folks who um, have canceled altogether and said, "Listen, I don't want to, I don't want to take the risk. I'm not going to travel again." But again, that is very few people who have done that. Most people are rebooking or booking new trips. What's up? The next one is from Catherine, and Catherine says. Would uh, you both share your thoughts on mental toughness during a challenging business and world climate? What's keeping you going? Me first? You? No, yeah. you go, no, you go first. Go ahead. Uh, okay, I'll go. No, you go. All right. This is fun. This no. makes for a fun show. I think part of it is that John, I feel lucky. First of all, I'm not, I'm not alone. I have my family here. My family is John and two dogs who are being really quiet. Um, so that makes it easier. I think the other part is, we've worked from home for a very long time. I've worked from home for 19 years now. And so that part's not weird. I miss my social life. I miss my income. But I think we're at the point where we just gotta be tough. You just gotta work through it. And I don't know that that works for everybody. I'm not downplaying what anybody else is going through. I'm just telling you that I find myself in what I consider to be a lucky position. What about you? I agree with everything you said. I also want to add to the fact is we are so busy. We, between people canceling trips and rebooking trips, and now new information is out. Adventures by Disney's released their 2021 itineraries. And you know all this information coming at us every minute, I find that I'm so busy. I almost don't have time to sort of be this, you know, uh, oh, woe is me, things are tough situation. I know that for a lot of people, this is very different for them. They, they used to be much more active, maybe going to work, and now they're working from home or, you know, I, I, unfortunately. And trying to teach their children. Yeah, unfortunately, maybe even laid off. So this is giving them um, some extra time at home that they, they never had before. So it's a little bit, it's a different routine for them. But for us, it's a similar routine and we're very busy. Now that doesn't change the fact that every once in a while, it kind of hits us. Usually something is announced in the news that um, kind of makes it like almost overwhelming. Um, I'm, I'm going to try to not be sad here or morbid here, but one of the things that really hit was when the first child, the first baby, was diagnosed and then unfortunately passed away. That kind of really took a toll on us and we were like, oh man. Something that got me was watching the coverage of the cruises and the one Norwegian cruise where they mentioned that a couple had passed away on the cruise. And the cru this was at a time when the cruise wasn't allowed to dock. And I thought, you know, we look at vacations and cruising it's such a wonderful experience and such a happy time to have that now be part of their cruise experience. That broke my heart. So things creep in, things, uh, you know, make it difficult. Um, but I think that because we've always worked from home and because it's very busy now, we're getting, uh, we don't really have, I don't know if I have the time, but like mentally, I don't know that I have the bandwidth to allow it to be a consistent downer. This also doesn't hit us both at the same time yeah. usually, which makes it easier. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, we could just take the box of chocolate chip cookies and go sit in the closet. It, <laughs> it's true. You, usually it hits one of us and the other one can sort of bolster things. Pull the other one out of it. All right, the next question. Come in the shower a little bit. There you go. All right, I am sitting on the world's most uncomfortable chair. All right. Kitty. Actually, yeah, it's um, Kitty Moose. You're Kitty Kitty. Mm -hmm. Kitty's not a kitty. Kitty's a friend of ours. Do you think a temperature check will be implemented at the parks prior to entering the parks and boarding DCL? I'm going to be honest with you. My speculation filter is of gone. Who knows? Everybody wants to know, when do you think the parks are going to open? When do you th what do you think cruising is going to be like? How What's is the buffet going to look like? How is Disney going to handle it? And i got to be honest with you, I think we're done speculating. I will say this. I think 1,000% the world is going to change, and anything you want to do is going to require a temperature check. 
getting on a plane, getting going to Which a is kind concert. of ridiculous. I'm hoping at that point that they're just ridiculous and that there's an instant check. But I don't think that's going to be at the gates, and I don't think that's going to be just as you board the ship. I think before you're allowed, I don't know if it's into the parking lot at DCL, you're going to have to prove that you don't have it or you're not carrying it. I don't know what the world will look like. It's going to look different. The world always looks different after an event of this magnitude. Look at how the world changed after 9-11. And you know what happened? We all just learned to deal with it. Right. Right. I think temperature checks are going to be something that's just going to be with us for a very long time because that's what we sort of have to go on as a possible idea that someone has it. Now, there's arguments. There's arguments about that, that, you know, people can be asymptomatic and still have the virus and still be a carrier of the virus. All of that is true and accurate, but I feel like what they've decided in general is the temperature check is a good thing they can do. So it's going to be with us for a while. I think people want to speculate and then people want to argue with the speculation and then want to show what they speculate and then others want to argue with that. I don't want to speculate. I really don't know what's going to happen to buffets or character meet and groups or fireworks or parades. I have none of that information. I I imagine though it's going to look different. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be healthier for all of us if we just deal with what happens. Right. Rather than worrying about what's going to happen and what it's going to look like, I got talking to my brother the other day, and they live in Miami, my brother and his wife and his family, and they cruise a lot. Because they live in Miami, they can get on a cruise very easily. And last minute. Last minute, take care, take advantage of good deals. And he and his wife wanted to know what I thought cruising was going to look like in the future and how it was going to be handled. And I said, I don't know what it's going to look like. All I know is I am going to react to whatever it looks like in the way that I see fit. So I think we should put our energy in the fact that we have to say to ourselves, whatever it is, let's figure out how we're going to deal with it and how we're going to react to that specific change going forward. So if you want us to speculate, I don't think we're going to. All right. Catherine. Do you believe, I believe a routine is critical and often overlooked as a part of success in all stratas of life. What daily, weekly routines do you and John have in business and in life? Four hours of Pilates, <laughs> followed by Soul Cycle. Are you impressed that I even know what those things yeah, are? I really am. <laughs> I don't even know what those words are. <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, I'll tell you what our day looks like. Oh, we don't have office hours so we're pretty regular in our sleeping hours we're usually in bed by 11 or 11 30 and we're usually up by 7 30 8 o'clock i can tell you that since this started we're staying up a little bit later and watching tv and sleeping a little bit later because there wasn't the pressing reason to get up well we're busy so now we're getting up earlier again Uh, We let the dogs out, we make coffee, we sit and watch 15 minutes of news, and then we have the discussion, do you want to have breakfast now or do you want to work for a couple hours? Usually it's work for a couple hours. We work until lunchtime, have a bite to eat, go back to work, and then we have dinner. And we watch a movie or watch TV or read, and rarely does work happen after dinner. Kevin checks his email. I do. Because he really deals, he deals with clients, so he wants to make sure he's put, you know, making sure no one's waiting for a response or things like that. I'll tend to stop checking my email at a certain time. Um, That's because John runs the business. Right. And then I think the other thing, too, is one of the things that we've always done, or I've always done at the very least, is I tend to work when I need to work. Right. So sometimes I'll get up earlier before Kevin does and it'll be something will be on my mind and I'll get up and I'll work for an hour before he gets up and then we have coffee and then do those other things. Um, sometimes after dinner it might be, you know, I have to take care of something, let me take care of something. But that's what's going on during this um, quarantine. Other times we don't take days off. I never have a day off and that's not a pity party. But it allows me to say to John, it's Wednesday, let's go to a movie. Let's go out to dinner. 
well, let's go to the park for a couple hours. Any of those things, and you can do that. We take our time off in blocks rather than days off. Now, we also travel a lot. That's kind of what I think part of what's missing in all this is that we can't really just say, okay, Let's get away from all this. Right. My, my, I've slowed down a little bit this afternoon. You've slowed down a little bit this afternoon. Let's go and do something. That seems to be taken away from us. And of course, travel. And walking from the living room to the, or from the office to the living room is not really that great because both of us take our phones with us. So, you know, um, I think we're different than a lot of people who work from home in that we don't do the, I'm going to get up at eight o'clock and I'm going to, you know, dress a certain way and I'm going to sit at my desk until lunchtime. We've been dealing with, um, I'm sure you guys have all been trying to do something with Disney during all this as well and you get the message that, you know, we're transitioning everybody to work from home and you're probably getting agents who are working from home. But an interesting talking to some of the folks Kevin deals with, they'll say things like, um, I'm going to call you, I'll get back to you on this and this afternoon because I'm going to go on my lunch break. And I think, lunch break? What does that mean? We eat when we're hungry. That's right. <laughs> it's like, or we eat when we're over hungry. We're not that and we're mad. And John still has to fit in time for Soul Cycle. I do. Soul I couldn't Cycle. even say that without laughing. And vision boarding. <laughs> I've got a lot of things on my plate. It bugs me. I'm going to tell you something. Listen to me, all you people out there. I'm really bugged by seeing all of you doing these 3,000 jigsaw puzzles and saying, oh, look, I finished my jigsaw puzzle. I don't have time for a jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> stop doing it. <laughs> stop showing. You're vexing, John. You're vexing me. <laughs> okay, next question. Next question comes from Michelle. What rides are easiest to get in and out of for someone with mobility issues? Our car. My dad has Parkinson's and balance issues and wants to enjoy the park. I would tell you any of the rides that don't have, where you don't have to transition from a mobility device are easier. There are some that you do. Like, you have to get in the Spaceship Earth car. You have to get in the Mission Space vehicle. Uh, they will stop the Haunted Mansion for you, but then you're still going to have to transition to the Doom Buggy. I think uh, there are rides where you can take your mobility device on. I think of things like Small World. So all of this is posted out front. I think he should go and see what he can do. Mm -hmm. I, I also strongly suggest that go and and go to the you know you're going to go to the special entrance and they're going or they're going to usher you to a special place. Let him see the vehicle and decide what he wants to do. Don't assume that he can't do it or won't do it up front. Take that time. You know, um, I talked about Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway and the fact that they have a completely different area for folks with uh, mobility issues to get into and out of the vehicles. You do have to transition, you do have to go in, but the fact that he can just see it and see how other people are doing it. And the other thing I wanna say too is, if he then at that point says, no, I don't wanna do it, don't pressure him to do it, don't argue with him, don't say, oh, please give it a try. Respect his limitations and that he knows his own limitations. That is perfect advice for everybody. Yeah. That's true of children, too. Yeah, for sure. Do not badger them. All right. The next one we covered in a different show. We booked a cruise with a different travel agent. It was canceled due to the virus. Is there a way to rebook with Dreams? So I'm going to do a little preamble here. Dreams Unlimited Travel, ugh, Dreams Unlimited Travel is not in the business of getting our clients from other travel agencies. That is not how we have done our model. Um, we think our reputation and our actions and our business service. service stand alone. And we have mechanisms for getting our clients. We advertise, as you know, we're part of the Diz Unplugged, the Diz Boards, www.info.com. So I do not ever want to say uh, you should look to work with us over another travel agency. If you are happy, with your current travel agent, please, please, please continue to work with them. Now, if you're not happy with that travel agent or if you work with Disney directly, yes, you can make your new booking, the one with the future cruise credit, through Dreams Unlimited Travel. A little piece of 
advice, a little piece of knowledge on the back end of how this works. Your future cruise credits are actually tied to your castaway club number. So if you're a party of four and your cruise was canceled and you were offered 125% future cruise credit, each person in their party has that 125% of their original booking cruise fare as a credit on that castaway club number. If you don't have a castaway club number because you haven't taken your first cruise yet, they can look you up by date of birth and name to figure out your future cruise credit. So if you want to work your dreams and you haven't worked with us in the past, what we're going to need is your castaway club number. If you don't have that, we're going to need the name, your name and birth date. And then this is true for everybody in your party because that's how we're going to go to Disney and look up your future cruise credit. If you're an existing client, we'll already have that information and that'll all be tied to the reservation you had with us in the past. So you don't need to do that. This is just for those who did not book with us in the past. I also want to mention too, um, uh, Adventures by Disney is allowing folks who are displaced by COVID-19 to book under the early booking discount before they open to the general public. And those can also be booked with Dreams Unlimited Travel if you didn't book with us in the past or previously. And what that will do is that will give you, for cruises you get our shipboard credit, but for Adventures by Disney, you get our Adventures by Disney booking discount. So ways for you to save a little more money, get something extra on your cruises, we can help you with those rebookings uh, going forward. But again, if you like your travel agent, please, please, please stick with your travel agent. All right, here's another travel related question, okay? I love travel related questions. I love magical days. What is your favorite soup on property? Soup? Oh, I know what mine is. Do you know what mine is? Yes. All right. Do you want me to, you know what mine is? Uh, is yours different from mine? Yes. I, I know, you're, is yours in the same place as mine? Nope. Is this a great show? All right, so go ahead. I'm gonna say, say mine. Go ahead. Mine is the onion soup in France. I love the onion soup. And one of the things about it is you get that big, hot bowl of soup with the melty cheese and that rich beef broth with the big chunks of onions. And then they give you that baguette, that crispy baguette and butter. Oh my God, I can make a meal just on that. I can just sit and have that all day. We and have I, a French onion soup story. Someday if you see us, ask us, I'll tell you in person. Yeah. That's, uh, that would be a good travel story for when we're no longer going to be in business. <laughs> and we don't worry about And I about, don't care what my rating is. Right, and we don't care about offending people. So that's a, a story for some other venue. But yeah, French onion soup in France, my favorite. My favorite is mulligatawny. I know that is, but where do you get it? Boma. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's Boma right. has, at least they used to. I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't been to Boma in a couple of years. I've been to Gico, but I haven't been to Boma. Boma used to have a soup bar. They might still. And they had a mulligatawny, which was like a chicken stew with a little curry in it. It's pretty much all I would eat. I would just eat bowl after bowl after bowl. I think that's the best. I was gonna guess, don't you like the lobster bisque at Chefs de France as well? I do like the lobster bisque. Yeah, that's it's not my favorite. Not your favorite. I knew Mulligatani was mm -hmm. your favorite soup, but I couldn't think where on Disney property you were getting it. I also like the cheddar cheese soup at um, La Cellier. Yeah, that is good stuff as well. I'm a big well. soup fan. All right, yeah. that's it. We'd rather go out for soup and bread and maybe a sandwich than almost anything else in the world. Yep. All right, so that's the end of the questions we have for this show. Yep, let's do another one after this. What do you mean by after? Like when we stop this one. So you want us to record a second one but not show it for a while? Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for listening and watching. We hope you have a great week. Please stay safe and stay healthy.